Let us pray. Father, this is our prayer this afternoon. We want to see you and to hear your voice speaking into our lives and helping us to be a Barnabas Christian as we learn more and more about this Bible character from the New Testament. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Alan Emery was the son of a Christian businessman, and he had an experience as a young person that made a very deep impression upon him. One evening, his father, who was uh, a, a very good businessman, doing well, received a call saying that a well-known Christian had been found drunk on one of the city streets. And immediately, his father sent for a chauffeured limousine to pick up the man and to bring him to their home. And while they're waiting for him to come, his mother prepared the best guest room for him. And Alan watched wide-eyed as his mother pulled back the beautiful covers from this uh, four-poster bed revealing the monographed sheets. And the young Alan protested. He said, but mom, he's drunk. He might even get sick tonight. I know, his mother replied, but this man has slipped and fallen. And when he comes to, he's going to be very ashamed, and he's going to need all the loving encouragement that we can give him. It was a lesson that this son never forgot. And Alan Emery, who passed away in 2010, after his retirement from business, became the chief operating officer of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. But what an example of encouragement his father gave to his son. Last week, we began a series of messages on the biblical character who had some wonderful gifts, and we discovered last week that Barnabas had the gift of giving. And uh, in Acts chapter 4, we read that there was a great need among the Christians in Jerusalem. And uh, some of the believers who had property sold it and brought the proceeds to the apostles to be distributed. And, and this man, Barnabas, he was really from, from Cyprus. But he heard about the need, and he came and gave what he had to help the poor in Jerusalem. Now, as I mentioned last Sunday, Joseph was his family name, and he was given this nickname of Barnabas because of the character that he was. He was a man who was always finding ways of bringing encouragement to others, and so they called him the son of encouragement or the son of exhortation. And so today, last week, we discovered that we can be a Barnabas by being a giving person. And today we discover that we can be a Barnabas person by being an encouragement to others, being an encourager and an exhorter. So let's just think about these two words. We don't use exhortation uh, as much, but before we do, here are some of the things that we're going to be learning about uh, Barnabas uh, we're going to learn in the next message that I share that he was an ambassador, and then he was a recruiter, and that he was a teacher. So let's just think about the difference between an encourager and an exhorter. And if we use the illustration of a race, it might help us. So encouragement um, tells a runner that he can win a race. It's the voice of the crowd, the fans, the supporters say, you can do it. Now the exhorter, he comes along and he says, tells him how you can win this race. He says, okay, if you just keep your head down and keep your eye on the goal, keep your arms moving, you can win the race. So they give some practical ways of accomplishing that goal. 
so the question today is, are you an encourager or will you become an encourager and an exhorter to help people in their walk with God? Uh, being an exhorter involves like being a counselor, an advisor, um, and we can do both. We can be, and, and Barnabas was both an encourager and an exhorter. Because Barnabas is a godly role model for us when it comes to encouraging. And he not only encourages us to run the race, but he also shows us ways that we can do that. He shows us by example to us. And so let's look at the example that we read in Acts 11, 22 to 24. And uh, we've already heard the scripture, but let me just recap. The church in Jerusalem, which was mainly composed of Jewish people, they heard that up in the city of Antioch in Syria, there were not just Jews who were coming to faith, but Greeks as well. And they, the church thought, we need to do something about this to encourage and help those Greek believers in their walk with God. And so this is what happened. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Because they knew the kind of person that he was, that he would be an encourager. When he arrived, he saw the evidence of the grace of God. See, he could see the good, the positive things in these people that he met there in Antioch. He said he was glad. And he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Then it gives a description. He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So because of his encouraging spirit, people were one to the Lord. Now you see that Barnabas encouraged them. He was glad for what he saw that was happening among those people. And he told them to continue. Now the word that is used for encouragement comes from a Greek word called parakaleo. And this word means to come alongside of someone or to exhort or to entreat or to comfort. And this word is often used of the Holy Spirit. Often he's referred to as the paraclete. But we can be that. And so this is just a reminder that the Holy Spirit, we often speak of the Holy Spirit as the paraclete, the one who comes alongside of us and gives us the strength and power and the ability to live out the Christian life. And so this is a gift that we need in the church, the reminder that we can be this kind of person to come alongside of others in their, in their times of, of need. And in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.14 Paul gives perhaps the classic example of what exhortation really means. He says, and we urge you, brothers, and notice the different categories of people that he addresses. Warn those who are idle. We see people who aren't active anyway in their faith, whatever. Encourage the timid. Bring them out. Encourage them to be involved. Help the weak. And be patient with everyone. So encouragement works for all kinds of people in all kinds of situations. The late chaplain of the United States, um, Richard Halverson, used to tell a story about a frog <clears throat> in a pothole. The pothole was uh, so deep that this frog just couldn't get out of that pothole. And his, his friends tried to get him to muster up enough strength so that he could jump out of that pothole. But finally they realized it wasn't going to happen, so they gave up on him and they just left him to his fate. But the next day they were amazed to see this frog hopping about like always. And somehow he made it out of the pothole. So they went to him and said, well, how did you get out of that pothole? You told us yesterday that there was no way that you could get out. This is what he said. Well, I couldn't get out, but 
a truck came along and I had to. <laughs> a truck came along and I had to get out. So that was the encouragement for this frog to get out of that pothole. Well, you know, when we go through times of difficulty, we don't want to have to have a truck to encourage us to get out of the potholes of our lives. But we need somebody in our lives, like a Barnabas, to come alongside of us and help us. And sometimes we need to be that Barnabas. We need to be the one that comes alongside of someone who's going through a very difficult time in their lives. We need to be their encouragement. In a survey taken by the Institute of Family Relations, parents were asked to record how many negative versus comments they made to their children every day. And this is a helpful survey for us to think about on uh, Father's Day. Do you know what the results were? Parents that were charting their responses to how they dealt with their children found that they criticized their children ten times for every favorable comment that they made. They made ten negative comments and one positive one. And they found this, the statistic was quite similar with teachers in the state of Florida, Florida that 75% of the time they spoke to their students in a negative way. So here is what they say that it takes four positive statements from a teacher or from a parent or from a friend to offset the effects of one negative statement to a child. So parents, friends, we've got a job cut out for us. Because people are getting negative comments all the time and we need to find ourselves as encouragers coming alongside of people and bringing that encouragement to them. Several years ago, a teacher was assigned to visit uh, a child in a large city hospital. And um, so she was given the, uh, the boy's name and uh, the uh, room number, and she was told to, uh, that right now we are studying nouns and adverbs in the class now, so that's what I want you to cover when you go to visit this little boy. Well, she wasn't told where in the hospital this little boy was. He was located in the hospital's burn unit, and he was uh, horribly burned and in tremendous pain. And um, she felt that, well, now that she had come, she just couldn't turn and, and walk away, and so she stammered kind of to the boy. She said, I'm, 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 I'm the hospital teacher, and your teacher sent me to help you with nouns and verbs. Well, the next morning, a nurse on the burn unit came to this teacher and says, what did you do to that boy? Well, the teacher started giving a profusion of apologies, and the nurse interrupted her. She said, you don't understand. We've been worried about this little fellow, but ever since you were here yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back. He's responding to treatments. It's as though he has decided to live. And the boy explained later, that he had completely given up on life, on ever recovering, of ever getting out of that hospital. But it all changed, and he realized, why would a teacher come and teach him about nouns and verbs if he was going to die? And so that thought was enough to encourage that little boy to get well and to begin to respond to treatment. Encouragement is powerful. And parents can have a great ministry, a big ministry for the Lord right in your homes. You can be a Barnabas to your children. You can encourage your children. 
Encouragement is what your children need more than anything. Far more people fail for lack of encouragement than other reasons. And more children fail to grow up serving the Lord because they did not receive that kind of encouragement in their homes. So we encourage not just by what we say, but we also encourage by what we do. Encouragers encourage by example. So just think about your own household. Who in your house today needs to be picked up? They need some encouragement. Is it a parent? A parent who has been strong and energetic and can do all kinds of things and, and now age has caught up with them and they need encouragement? Or is it a child that doesn't seem to have the same athletic ability or be able to do the same uh, scholastically as other children? Does that child need some encouragement? Does he need you to be a Barnabas for him? Are you an encourager in your family to young and old? Don't wait until it's too late to encourage your children until they've grown up and left your home. And as Lena Horn says, this is a statement, I don't know how many of you know Lena Horn, the great singer, and she says, it's so nice to get flowers while you can still smell the fragrance. Sometimes when you get old enough, you may not be able to smell that fragrance. So give those flowers now while they can still really enjoy not just the beauty, but the fragrance of those flowers. So be an encourager, be a Barnabas Christian. And you can be that because the Lord can enable you and empower you to be that kind of encourager in your home and in your community. So what are some principles to keep in mind when we're giving encouragement. First of all, encouragement has to be genuine. Don't say something to someone if you know that there's no way on this earth that they can ever do that. So you've got to be genuine and real in what you share by way of encouragement and exhortation. Because people can see through flattery or a false heart. So be genuine. Second, we can give encouragement simply by our life and by our example. And they say that our faith is more caught than taught. They pick up how important church, how important Bible reading, how important prayer is by what they see you as parents doing and what your attitude is towards these spiritual disciplines. And third, when we speak, Our speaking must be uplifting. Now, there are times when we have to say things to people that we're not sure how they might take it. They might take it the wrong way. And so we have to use tact and wisdom in how we share our exhortation and encouragement to people. But if people know in their hearts that we really love them, that we are concerned about them, we want the best for them, most likely they will be able to accept our words of encouragement. This past week, the great uh, hockey legend uh, Gordie Howe was laid to rest in uh, Detroit after an illustrious career in hockey. He was born in my home province of, (coughs) of Saskatchewan. So I'm extra proud of, uh, of Gordy. <clears throat> but it is interesting, if any of you saw on the news, the tributes that were given to Gordy Howe, the, the tribute, the, the, the quality that comes out most often is that he was an encourager. He thrived on getting together with these little kids, you know, eight, ten-year-old kids, having his picture taken with them, showing them a few moves and so on. He just was thrilled with doing that. He met uh, Wayne Gretzky when he was just a teenager and had such a profound 
influence on Wayne Gretzky. And when Wayne Gretzky shared his, his tribute, he had tears in his eyes. He was so moved by this man who was so well-known and yet was so simple and humble and was a great encourager to people down through his 88 years. It's the hallmark of his life. And God wants that to be a hallmark of our lives as well. So, Barnabas was a great encourager. He was an encourager by example. He went quietly about his business and brought joy and glory to the Lord. Uh, he was an encourager in how he spoke to people, in the people that he brought into the church and into the kingdom, and we're going to be learning about that later on when we discover he was the one that introduced Saul, later Paul, into the church. So what a great gift of encouragement he had. And so this week, I want us to think about to whom can you be an encourager? Who is God putting on your heart that you can either phone up and say, can I have coffee with you and talk with you? Or write a note, send an email to this week to bring encouragement to them. William Barclay, in his commentary on Hebrews, says this, One of the highest of human duties is the duty of encouragement. It is easy to pour cold water on, their, on other people's enthusiasm. It is easier to discourage others. The world is full of discouragers. We have a Christian duty to encourage one another. Many a time, a word of praise or thanks or appreciation or cheer has kept a man on his feet. So, what changes would take place if we started practicing this Barnabas principle? What difference would it make in your home? Well, I think that we would see uh, in our families a lot more catching people doing the right thing than doing the wrong thing if we are really encouraged or involved with encouraging. Encouragement and the right kind of exhortation will bring out the best in our families. What would it mean in the church? What we see in, in our biological families is also true in the church. There are folks that are going through difficult times. At times they may be failing in some way, maybe failing in their walk with Christ. And we can come alongside them and encourage them, not talk about them and say, just look how careless they are, whatever. We can come alongside and encourage them in their walk with the Lord. And that way we can bring them back into a vital relationship with God. What would it mean in the workplace? At work, you can be an encourager. What we're talking about just isn't for a Christian environment. It's true in any environment. We can be an encouragement. Be an encouragement to your employer or to someone who's maybe not doing so well in their work. Maybe there's struggles at home, and so they're letting down on the job. And you can come alongside them and say, what's happening? Is there some way that I can help you in, in your work to get caught up or whatever? Because that kind of concern can make a big difference in the workplace. It can change the atmosphere of the workplace. And that's basically what Barnabas did in his life and in his ministry. So, all day long, whatever it is, wherever we find ourselves we can have this kind of ministry of encouragement. The Barnabas principle is a good principle for all of us to follow. And that's why I've entitled this message, Barnabas, an encourager par excellence, because he found so many ways of being an encouragement to others. And so, with God's empowerment, we will be Barnabas Christians by giving encouragement to others this week. I want to close this message by 
sharing a video that I shared several months ago, but it's a powerful um, video of encouragement and especially for uh, Father's Day. I'm just going to ask that this other light will be uh, turned out. string tore. He hobbled into a halt, then fell to the ground in pain. Then I am still and wait here in silence until you come. As stretcher bearers made their way over to him, he knew he had to decide. Despite the pain, he stood up and began to hobble along the track. Suddenly, a large man pushed through the crowds, fighting back security. The man was his father. To do this, he told the weeping son. Yes, I do. His son did. You raised me up so well, then, replied his dad, we are going to finish this you together. Me to walk on stormy the father wrapped his arms around his son and helped him hobble through the trap. give his all. Motivated by a love so strong of a father who picks him up when he falls. What made his father do that? To leave the stands and meet his son on the tracks? It was the pain on his child's face. His son was hurt but wanted to finish the race. So the father came to help him finish. God is like that. When we are hurt and fighting to finish, he comes and helps us.
How about you? How was your race? Are you in pain? Are you on the verge of quitting? God wants you to finish strong because he loves you. Will you open your heart to him? We need each other, don't we? And it's wonderful to know that God is our encourager, but he in, in turn entrusts that task and responsibility to each of us. And let's stand as we sing the chorus number 325. We'll stand together. <laughs>